quick revision video on transition elements catalysis. So we'll start with the essentials, definition of a catalyst substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction by providing an alternative route for the reaction with a lower activation energy. They can be heterogeneous, so that's a different physical state to the reactants, or homogeneous, they've got the same physical state as the reactants. Some benefits of catalysts, they allow the process to operate at lower temperatures, so that's going to lower energy consumption and therefore less carbon emissions. They allow alternative reactions with higher atom economies, so therefore less waste. And they allow alternative reactions with less toxic reactants. So we're going to look at the two types of a catalysis now in more detail. So we'll start with heterogeneous catalysis. So just a reminder of what they are. Different physical state to the reactants. So some examples. The Haber process uses an iron catalyst. Contact process uses a vanadium 5 oxide catalyst. Hydrogenation of alkenes uses a nickel catalyst. Decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, an MnO2, so manganese 4 oxide catalyst. And finally, the catalytic converter in cars uses a mixture of platinum, palladium, and rhodium. So we need to know how heterogeneous catalysts work, so that's via a three step process. So I'll just run through those three steps. So that picture there represents the um, catalyst, and the separate green and blue are the reactants and the combined green blue is the product. So the first part of the process is adsorption, not absorption. So the reactants bind loosely to the catalyst surface and that weakens the bonds in the reactants. Part two, very straightforward, reaction takes place. So collisions occur between the reactants and the products are formed. And then the final step is called desorption. The products leave the surface of the catalyst. So I just remember it with an acronym ARD. Adsorption, reaction, desorption. Or you could think of it as hard, heterogeneous, adsorption, reaction, desorption. So we'll move on to homogeneous catalysis now. So just a reminder of the definition. Catalyst and reactants in the same physical state now. A couple of examples, esterification, so that's a carboxylic acid reacting with an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst, and the depletion of atmospheric ozone by chlorine radicals. So in both of those cases, the reactants and catalyst are in the same physical state. Neither of those involve transition elements, so the worked example I'm going to use does. So it's the reaction between the peroxidized sulfate ion and the iodide ion. Now in the exam, you're not going to be expected to remember all of this detail. They'll just give you the um, equations and you've got to kind of put them together. So this reaction is slow because that both of the reactants are negatively charged. So we can use a mixture of iron 2 plus iron 3 plus aqueous ions to catalyze the reaction. And what's happening is iron is using its ability to change its oxidation state. Remember, that's a property of a transition element, and that's going to help catalyze this reaction. So just the half equations before we go into the detail. So iron 2 plus ions can lose an electron and form Fe3 plus. And the opposite can happen. Iron 3 plus can gain an electron and form iron 2 plus. So I've got this um, sort of diagram here to try and explain what's going on. So just a reminder of the overall reaction. So the iodide ions need to turn into I2, and the S2O8 2 minus ions need to turn into two sulfate ions. So essentially, the iodide ions need to lose two electrons, and they need to be given to the S2O8 2 minus ions. So remember what we said about iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus, so they can gain electrons and lose electrons. So if we bring that into the middle of the diagram, you can see I've got two moles of Fe3 plus and two moles of Fe2 plus, because two electrons are involved, remember. 
So what's going to happen is the iodide ions are going to get rid of their electrons and the iron 3 plus ions are going to gain them and turn into Fe2 plus. That's going to then lose the two electrons and essentially give them to the S2OA2 minus ions. So if we bring all the equations together now, so the Fe3 plus ions are gaining those two electrons, remember, from the two I minus ions. That's going to form I2 and 2Fe2 plus. And then the iron 2 plus is going to lose those two electrons and give them to the S2OA2 minus ions and form the products. And obviously we form Fe3 plus. These reactions can occur in any order. So obviously that one, I could have written that one first and then that one. So there's no specific order to this. So the overall equation is just the sum of those two steps. So we get this long equation here, and then we're just going to cancel out like terms. So obviously all the Fe, 2 plus and 3 plus ions. So you can see everything's being regenerated, hence fitting in with the definition of a catalyst. So we simplify to the equation that we wanted, S2O8 2 minus plus 2I minus going to 2 sulfate ions and I2 